Hello and welcome back to the Game Law Archives. We're back with some Sea of Thieves lore, with a few theories thrown into the mix to make sense of some of the missing gaps from last time. Today we'll be focusing on the mermaids and their statues, the kraken, cursed objects, and the magic of the day-to-day -day chest that you chuck at the gold hoarders with reckless abandon. Now, I know it seems like quite a mishmash of topics, however they are all related thanks to Captain Ramsey and his crew. However, before we discuss them, we do need to discuss the relationship between the mermaids and the ancient civilization who used to inhabit the Sea of Thieves. Legends of mermaids have been around planet Earth since 1000 BCE. The oldest legend I can find was the tale of the goddess Atagatis, who accidentally killed her human lover. Ashamed of her mistake, Atagatis jumped into the ocean and turned herself into a mermaid, casting herself out of human society in punishment. This is the first story, but it definitely isn't the last, as most cultures seem to have some myth about mermaids. In most cultures' legends, mermaids are depicted as these unworldly beautiful women who swim the earth using their fish tail, which they have in place of legs. Some countries believe that the mermaids are evil creatures who lure sailors off their boat using their voices and drown them when they're in the water, and sometimes change this slightly to say that mermaids never speak but sing to the boat's captains, which distracts them so much they crash their boat onto nearby rocks. Other cultures view mermaids as harmless, with their legends telling stories of mermaids falling in love with men and bestowing magical boons upon them. These mermaids are also frequently renowned for having beautiful singing voices, which can sometimes be heard for miles around. In many of these stories, it focuses around a mermaid, uh, but sometimes stories of mermen do crop up occasionally. Historians believe these rumours began when sailors saw manatees at a distance, but how they mistook a manatee for a beautiful human woman is one theory I'm not getting into and don't want to think about. No. Of course, in the Sea of Thieves, mermaids are very much alive and real and look very similar to many of the stories told across the globe. However, there does appear to be just as many mermen as there are mermaids. Regardless of their gender, from the waist up they look like a human being. Their looks can be as varied as ours. That's not to say they could ever be mistaken for a human. The merfolk's skin has a pale blue hue to it, along with gills on their neck which allow them to swim underwater for long periods of time. It seems that they do have some form of capacity to breathe oxygen as well, as they often swim just above the waves, where acting as a beacon for drowning sailor who's fallen overboard. Much like in the myths, they don't have legs, but long fish-like tails. These tails propel the merfolk through the waters at speeds surpassing any boat, while being infinitely more manoeuvrable. The mermaids of the Sea of Thieves also do sing, but they don't use their voice as a deadly weapon. In fact, singing is the race's main method of communication. The mermaid song never stops and is sung in different pitches and tones to convey its meaning. Humans can hear this song when in the presence of mermaids or a mermaid statue, but it just sounds like a hum or a wail. Mermaids, however, can hear this song wherever they are in the ocean, regardless of distance. This binds the race together as one. This song has stretched on throughout the years, and not one note in its history has ever been forgotten. And as every note is information, it means that everything that an individual mer sees or hears is shared with the rest of the race and then is collectively never forgotten. The very concept is a strange one to wrap your head around, however, due to their aquatic nature, it leaves them unable to write or draw very well, uh, and so this song is how their history is passed down the generations, along with their day-to-day -day conversations. Now, we don't know very much about the day-to-day -day life of merfolk, except they do follow a leader who we think is a queen, but this can't be proven as the last recording sighting of this leader was around a year after Ramsey's crew learned to navigate the Devil's Shroud. And that's all the concrete information we have on the mermaids for the time being. However, the ancient civilization who used to inhabit the Sea of Thieves, who we believe to be the Taino, and they knew a lot more about the Mer, to the extent that they even had an alliance with them. You see, the Taino were an incredibly curious race of people and constantly wanting to learn about their surroundings and eventually learned of the area's manifested magic. 
which they began to mark with cave paintings in the hope that the drawings would transcend both written and verbal language. As time passed and their knowledge grew, they began to build temples as both a place of worship and a building which could help them harness the magic. Finally, after years of studying, the Taino finally learned how to let magic flow through them into objects to imbue them with great boons or even curses. As Joe said, the ancient race was incredibly clever and they were always seeking to extend their knowledge. So while they studied magic, they simultaneously started to cultivate a relationship with the merfolk so they could learn from and about them. The first hurdle to overcome was a language barrier, a way for humans to understand the mermaid's song. So the Taino hunted down pearls to fashion into earrings, imbued them with magic to allow its wearer to understand the song as well as join in. Sometimes things would get lost in translation, but it was enough for the two races to understand each other. Now they could communicate, the Taino constructed underwater meeting chambers where the two races could comfortably meet and discuss anything they needed to. With the two races able to meet and communicate, an alliance swiftly grew. The merfolk shared their information of the sea, while the Taino shared their vast knowledge of the rest of the world. The merfolk soon realised that many of the precious gems they frequently found deep in the ocean's depths were highly valued by the Tiano, so brought them to the humans as gifts. In return they would occasionally ask humans to use their weapons and magic to help them with any obstacles they couldn't overcome by themselves. Unfortunately we only have two examples of how the humans helped the mer. One was called the Whispering Plague which is seldom mentioned and we know absolutely nothing more about it other than the name. The second problem the humans aided the Mer with was the threat of Old Mother. And luckily we know exactly what that threat is and how the humans helped. Old Mother was a very large and very powerful Kraken. On Earth, sightings of the Kraken can be dated way back to the 13th century to an old Icelandic saga that has continued to be described a variety of times since. Unlike the legends of mermaids, accounts of a kraken's appearance vary wildly. Originally it was described as a crab-like being with traits akin to a whale, and this has slowly changed throughout the years to appearing a bit more like a giant octopus or squid. And while we may never see the entire kraken in game, the tentacles and the artwork show that this depiction is very much the case for the kraken found in the Sea of Thieves. I should point out that the kraken you fight in game are not the old mother herself, but instead her children. Who are tiny and weak compared. Of course, all her children are large enough to eat a ship, but old mother was said to be so big that she dwarfed any outpost. That's not to say her children are pushovers though. Each kraken not only has an incredible sense of smell, but can also detect a person's body temperature. These two senses are a deadly combination when combined with the beast's amazing memory. It can easily smell multiple boats presence while simultaneously tracking multiple people's body temperature in the water and remembering where they all are. So you better make sure you finish any kraken off your fighting because if they live, they will track you down quicker than any bloodhound. Unfortunately for pirates, killing a kraken is no easy feat as they rarely reveal their entire body, spreading huge amounts of black ink in the water to obscure themselves, which has led to most survivors of the kraken attacks only able to describe the monster's tentacles, which each end in a deadly maw. Luckily these attacks are rare, for now. Now a squid can hatch up to 70,000 eggs in a single litter, and what's to say this is her first batch of babies? For all we know, there's millions of krakens currently hibernating, and God help any sailor around when the rest wake up ready for breakfast. We know the kraken hibernates, as Old Mother used to hibernate for centuries before finally waking. Once awake, she almost immediately started to hunt, which is why the mer needed the human's help. Each time Old Mother woke, it would target the mer and devour the race to the point of extinction, before falling back into another slumber to allow the mer population to regrow. So, to save their allies, the humans agreed to kill Old Mother. However, they needed to know how. The beast was so big that any weapon proved ineffective. Its hide was so thick that a blade imbued with even the most potent magic barely left a scratch. 
Not that these scratches were common, as nobody could get close enough to swing their sword before getting bashed, smashed, or eaten. So, finally, after many failed attempts, the humans came up with a plan. They constructed great chains that were large enough to capture the beast. The greatest human spellcasters came forward and imbued the chains, making them unbreakable and impervious to rust. Then, with the Mer's help, they captured Old Mother, looping the chains around the island's cave system itself. Old Mother fought for her freedom, and rumour has it that she thrashed around trying to free herself for 100 years before eventually dying. After her death, all but one of her young fled deep into the ocean and settled into their own hibernation, ready to wake for their own deadly hunts. And this brings us back to when Captain Ramsay's crew enters the Sea of Thieves. They all heard of the same myths and legends we have, but presumably they were all made up stories. However, the longer they sailed, the more Ramsay and Mercia began to realise that magic was very much alive in these waters. Ramsay had originally wanted to be the only ship in the Sea of Thieves, but after about a year after he arrived, other people began to successfully make the journey through the Devil's Shroud. So Ramsay and Mercia's goal changed. Instead of being the only pirate on the sea, Ramsay wanted to steal magic itself, so his crew could use it alone. In contrast, Mercia wanted to learn and study magic to slate her scientific curiosity. So Ramsay begins to sail between taverns in hopes of finding out any information on anything magical. Finally, Mercia talks to an elderly pirate who tells them the last voyage she went on led to her ship crashing against an unmarked circular island with a huge sinkhole at its centre. She tells them when she looked into the water, she saw a grand hall under the waves, lit by magical flames with no fuel source that stayed alight underwater. She gives Mercy the directions, and Ramsay sets sail, not stopping until they reach the island. Ramsay and Mercy disembark and see the huge hallway for themselves, so dive into the sinkhole to explore this strange underwater hall. As they swim, they can hear strange singing surrounding them. As Mercia looks for the source, she finds some of the magical pearl earrings and puts them on. Of course, she has no way of knowing that these earrings are magical, but of course, the second she does put them on, the singing around her translates itself, and she begins to understand the history of the mermaids. And as she listens, the leader of the merfolk appears. Who Mercia believes to be a queen, although it's never fully confirmed. This leader asks for Mercia and Ramsay's help in freeing two mermaids that have been caught by pirates, promising to help them in return. Of course, Ramsay's crew save the captured mermaids, reigniting the human mer alliance. Which is why the mer are so ready to help humans that have fallen from their ship. The mer also lead Ramsay's ship to the island where Old Mother's corpse lies, still wrapped in the chains. The island itself is never named, however I'm going to take a leap of faith and say it's on Kraken's fall. With the Mer's help, Ramsay's crew take the chains off Old Mother's bones and ferry the enchanted metal to their home on Thieves' Haven, where they can study the metal and slowly learn its magical properties. As these become clear, Ramsay comes up with an idea which would change the Sea of Thieves forever. Another member of his crew, called Shan, is an inventor and using Shan's inventive brain, combined with Mercia's ever-growing skills in magic, they work together to melt the chains down and reforge them into the items that you commonly see today, and which you probably don't even think about as magical. Shan made the first prototype cannon, which allows pirates to be fired from them without taking any damage, unless they miss their target. Shan had had this idea before, but couldn't get them to work without Mercia imbuing the cannons with magic. This idea caught on so much that it is now standard equipment in the Sea of Thieves. While they tinkered a little, most of the metal was used to create various treasure chests, which were unbreakable and unpickable, along with a handful of keys to open them, so they knew their loot would be safe. The chests were made so strong without the keys that they are completely useless. They added extra protection to some of these chests, cursing them so if they're picked up, the wielder will be the drunkest they've ever been, so much so that it's impossible to walk. 
The only type of chest we don't think they invented were the chest of sorrows. These chests have a Merz face atop them, crying so much any boat is a, th is a threat of sinking while it is aboard. The merfolk seem to be fully aware of these chests and treat them with great fear and anger, which leads me to think that these poor things were once living and breathing mer. Perhaps this horrific curse was inflicted by the final race we want to discuss today. So, one of the biggest mysteries in the Sea of Thieves to date is that of the mermaid's curse, and many fans have wanted to know exactly what this is. For those that don't know, painted on one of the islands is a picture of a person in the water, slowly transforming into a mermaid. This seems to take place over a single moon cycle, and it shows them falling into the water, and transforming first into a mermaid, followed by changing into something... darker. But these evil mermaids have yet to be seen in game. The curse is also mentioned in the lore book, Tales from the Sea of Thieves, where some artwork can be seen, next to a poem that tells a story of pirates falling from their ships and being dragged into the ocean by mermaids, who wrap the victim's legs up using their own skin. Because the curse is mentioned in the lore book, as well as the ancient cave paintings, many people in the Sea of Thieves community has taken this curse as a fact. However, after doing more research into the mermaids, I don't believe it's quite as straightforward as that. So if mermaids were created by passing a curse onto humans, a few plot holes quickly start to appear in the Sea of Thieves lore. The first thing that doesn't make sense is when the ancients vanished, the merfolk wouldn't have been able to create any more members of their species. So if the ancients have really been gone for so long, wouldn't the merfolk have died out by now? Granted, hypothetically, mermaids could live a much longer lifespan than humans, but after all this time, they still would have grabbed the first human they saw after so long just to ensure their race's survival. Don't forget that the driving instincts of all animals across the globe, humans included, is to procreate to ensure their race continues. This means it's unlikely that they would have asked for Ramsay and Mercia's help, and actually probably would have attacked them immediately, going along with many other humans they found swimming in their territory. But that just didn't happen. Even the two mermaids that Ramsay saved didn't curse their captors once they were free. The second plot hole is the whole mermaid-human alliance. If two races live so close but couldn't communicate, peace is not always guaranteed. And if mermaids would just randomly show up and start killing people, you wouldn't try so hard to communicate with them. You would start a war. Especially when humans are involved, we are an incredibly mistrusting and destructive race. Even if it was a small portion of rogue mermaids who were inflicting the curse, without being able to communicate, the ancient civilization would have no way of knowing this, so would have turned their weapons and magic to defend themselves. This would have spiralled into a war long before the magical earrings were even considered. And this leaves us with a curse that has been confirmed in law, but if it's true, it contradicts everything else. So what's going on? Well. What would happen if there was a curse, but it had nothing to do with the mermaids, but a different species entirely? These two races would need to look similar, while actually being very different. Now, like a lot of the Sea of Thieves episodes and lore we've already covered, this is just a theory. However, there is a little bit of evidence that could back it up. But first, we kind of need a name for this evil aquatic humanoid creature. Every other species seems to be based on real-world mythology, krakens, mermaids. Um, so I started to look through mythology for all creatures that look similar to mermaids, who attacked and dragged people below the water. And the closest thing I could find was a water hag called Jenny Greenteeth, an urban legend told close to our own homes. This means it's told around Lancashire, Liverpool, Cheshire and Shropshire in English folklore. See Google Maps if you're not sure where they are. <laughs> Jenny Greenteeth certainly looks the part, living in underwater ponds where she drags children or the elderly into the waters to drown them. However, as I say, she seems to be classed as a water hag. Uh, so I investigated what water hags are in general, and that's when this theory fell apart. Most water hags appear much closer to their representation in The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt game. Uh, so I went back and searched again. 
And this time, I think I have found the answer. I believe that the second species we're looking at are the sea koi. The sea koi originate from a Philippine legend. The females of the species, called Sirena, match the appearance of a typical mermaid legend, while the males look much more animalistic. The sea koi are humanoids with fish-like scales that cover their bodies. These scales can vary from blue to green and browns. They all have gills on their neck allowing them to swim indefinitely. And while they're much more fish-like than your standard mermaid, they still have a humanoid upper body with a fish tail instead of legs. Although some legends do depict them with scale encrusted legs with webbed feet. Their hands are webbed, ending in lethal claws along with sharp teeth. They are incredibly fast, strong and intelligent and anyone unlucky enough to be swimming in a sea koi's territory will soon find themselves dragged below the sea. In fact, they're so smart, they, they have been said to be capable of hunting an entire boat's crew, picking them off one by one. We think these sequoia and evil mermaids match up in both looks and behaviours, and so we'll be classing them as such in our future content until any more information comes to light. In the Sea of Thieves, according to the poem in the law book, and as depicted on the rock paintings, the sequoia grab anyone swimming in the ocean and wrap their legs up into a towel by using the skin off their own tail. This poor pirate then slowly begins to transform into another member of the Sikoi race. During the early stages of this transformation, they probably do look really similar to a mermaid, which is where the confusion of this curse has come from. However, eventually, their teeth sharpen and their eyes become huge, yellow and bug-like, until eventually they are transformed completely. As they are a second race, the loopholes we found are no longer an issue, and in fact helps explain why we haven't seen the Sukhoi in-game yet. As we said, without victims to turn for years and years, their population is at an all-time low, and the few remaining have only just started to curse humans, and so are only just starting to rebuild. And because their numbers have increased slightly, we should expect to start seeing activity from them any time now. And to be honest, I think we already have. Recently, mermaid statues with precious gems inside have started appearing across the seas, dotting the shores of islands, as well as being found much deeper in the ocean. However, they don't look anything like the mermaids that come to save us. And although they are said to present humans' gems as gifts, why make the statues hurt us when we try and get the gems? I believe that these statues are built to look like the Sikoi. I think they know about the Murs Alliance, so they've placed gems inside of the statues to lure and kill anyone who tries to grab the treasure. The humans wouldn't expect it as they think they're just gems given to them by the mermaids. This would also explain why the statues don't appear near the outposts. The risks of getting spotted would be far too great. Uh, and as we said earlier, I also believe that it could be the Sikoi who have cursed the mermaids into the cursed chests many years ago. While this is just a theory, a line of the law book does allude to something being off with the curse, as if something we know isn't quite right. And while this doesn't prove our theory is correct, it does throw the curse as we know it under some suspicion. And unlike most of our theories, this one may well be proven or disproven in time as I'm sure the Sequoia will appear in game at some point, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how close or far off we are at the time. The last curse we need to cover is the Curse of the Undead, and that's a whole other kettle of fish, so much so that we will need to cover it in another episode, but don't worry, it hasn't been forgotten, I just don't want to rush it and do it the justice it deserves, as it's a big topic with a lot of information, and it's also when we're going to discuss skeletons, ghosts, and the ferryman. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell for that. I would also love to hear your own theories on the mermaids and your opinions on our theory. Uh, do you think that mermaids are one race or two? Or, you know, something completely different? Write in the comments so we can have a chat about it. And until then, we'll see you next time.